Hello YouTube, welcome to part 12 of our cargo trailer to camper build. Um, we're back, like I said, you know, you saw our video when we went camping, but yes, we are back. We've done, uh, we're getting to more of the finer details, the uh, smaller things, but I, like I said, I said the last time was if you have questions, share some questions. So we're going to go over. Now, let me just break in. Hey, YouTube, this is Rob the Real. I'm David's cameraman, sitting here on the opposite side of the camera. Just wanted to say hey and uh, welcome back. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cover some of your questions, some of the things we've done, some of the things we've realized that we should have done differently. So, and unfortunately, I'm going to apologize now. We're in South Florida. We have a cold front coming through. It's windy. And I want to show you guys two things. One of the questions I had was roof coating and our TV antenna. So unfortunately, we are going to have to go outside for some of that. So we're going to go outside, do that first, and then we're going to come back in and answer a bunch of questions and show you some more stuff on the inside. And YouTube, uh, we do apologize. You're probably going to get wind noise, which drives us crazy in, in other people's videos, but... We had a cold front come through here. Like David said, we're in South Florida. Uh, apologize to our viewers north of the Mason-Dixon, but it's a chilly 70 here. Sorry, guys, but I had to say it. It is what it is. So we're going to go outside. We're going to show you a couple things outside, and then we're going to come back in where we should get some better audio quality. All right, so anyway, we... I'm going to cover roof coating and the TV antenna. So I'm going to get up on the ladder so I can give you guys a better view of it and what we did. So right, I'm going to pass the camera up to him because I can't reach. All right, so here is the roof of our trailer. And like I said, what we did was originally this roof was just galvanized metal and we applied what they call a fibered roof coating. I got it from the depot and the brand name was Silver Dollar and it's a reflective roof coating. And of course you can see our vent covers and I'm going to show you the newest addition. This is my HDTV omnidirectional antenna and in front of that is our FM antenna. Like I said, they did a great job sealing it, but it needed a little bit of extra protection. This is two coats of it. I bought two gallons and two gallons covered it. It was about basically a $40 investment, but it's reflective. It seals it better than what it was and we are going to go inside and hand the camera back to Robbie and then we are going to work on the rest of what everyone is seeing. Go back inside. All right, like I said, uh, we said in our last video was if you guys want to see something. I just want to interject here. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in South Florida. We're probably about maybe six miles from the ocean as a crow flies. And with the ceiling of the roof, we do have obviously salt in our, our rainwater. So we have to consider, you know, that when we, we sealed it. Yes. Um, I want to first of all thank you guys for all the likes. Um, I said we were trying to do this channel just to give you guys some information. Uh, we have 175 subscribers, lots of likes on the videos, and thank you very much for all that. Yeah, thanks, YouTube. So, you guys are doing great. Um, like I said, we asked for questions. We got questions. Uh, Joe Shaver 100 posted a bunch of questions. Uh, the first question I'm going to cover is obviously our last video, you guys saw us camping. Uh, we backed the camper in, and his question was Are we using Robbie's van for towing? We did when we bought it. We did on the way back, but on the way to the campground, I actually used my car. My 
I have a 96 Mercury Sable wagon and it worked fine. Uh, it was just more convenient on the way back and the way the video looked was that we use it for towing. No, my Mercury, Mercury Sable wagon towed it very nice. We did some modification to it. We put an Airlift 1000, it basically it's airbags because it has coil springs. It towed it no problem. On the way back, we towed it with Robbie's van because we did a bunch of modifications to his van since we actually picked the trailer in Georgia. So we'll talk about that a little bit later about what we did with his van. But no, my wagon towed it fine, had no issues. So yes, it wasn't a problem. The next question he had was the hot water heater. The hot water heater we have is Lysen. Good job. Nice job was a two and a half gallon point of use hot water heater and his question was is it enough for a hot shower well first of all we do not have an actual shower in the camper we have an outside shower we have two and a half gallons of hot water which is 130 degrees if you split it up between the hot water and the, the cold water that's like five gallons of water. You cannot just stand outside and just let the water run like at home. You have to get wet, lather up, it will work. And the recovery time I was pretty impressed with, I wanna say it was like about like a half hour and it was hot again. So it does work. It's not at home, but it does work. So all depends what you're looking for and like I said personally for me more or less I'm looking when I go to a campground use the showers at the campground they are paying for everything it's more convenient I don't need a shower here uh, the next thing that Joe wanted to see was more about our bedding how I did the beds um, we have a 6x14 trailer I was trying to build it for four people so we had to come up with how to get it to work. So you guys saw us using it last weekend. This is how we transport it. Um, the bunk bed's up. It's a couch. Everything's in here. This is, you know, I got the easy up, the camp kitchen, my propane, which let's cover the propane first. Like I said, the issue we had with the propane was I don't have the space to mount it on my tongue of the trailer. I don't want to mount it on the back because I said heaven forbid I get rear-ended. Hanging off the back is not good. So what I have to do is take it from inside, put it outside and hook it up. What I liked was the a 20 pound propane tank fits in a milk crate. There is, I mean, unless you're going to be going off-roading, there is no way that this thing's going to tip. So in order to open up the bed, um, which should I do first, Robbie? Bunk bed or... Start with, start with the bunk bed and then we close it back up. And okay, move sounds there. good. So, let me move this out of the way. And also, let me... You got a match? Uh, yes, I do. And actually, let me, let me tell you this. All of our videos, like I said, Robbie and I are not tech people. No. We don't edit nothing. We start a video, if it's 20 minutes long, it is it. We don't edit nothing because we... Don't know how to edit videos. So you get it raw. <laughs> it is what it is. So, anyway, uh, bunk beds. I'll let Robbie kind of come down here. What we did, like I said, I, in order to make this work for four people, what we did was um, basically this is what I call cleats. Um, we took one by three, we got these from the depot. All of these are screwed into every stud in the back wall the side walls, and I also use Grabit. I love Grabit. Grabit is a construction adhesive. We Obviously, we made sure they were all level, square, whatever. And that is what supports the bunk bed. We took a 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch um, birch plywood because it's got a nice grain pattern. It's, it'll accept stain, polyurethane, whatever. Look nice. And we ripped it in half. So this section here is two feet. From here to the top is two feet. So that gives the girls a four foot by 60 inch bed, I believe is what the dimensions are. Um, 
And also what we had to do was in the corners, I mean, I, we showed you the speakers, but um, when we bought the trailer, all the wiring for the, all the tail lights and everything are behind the corners. In order to run the extra 110, the 12 volt, the speaker wires, we mitered some one by eight and did that there. So, we're getting into the campground. And what we did was, we have two barrel bowls. One on either side that holds it in the upright position. And as far as support, what we ended up doing was wood glue. I, like I said, I've done cabinet building before, whatever. So we built a cleat here that supports the middle of the bed and then one at the outer edge. And I used, I think we used, what, four typical door hinges, yeah. which are on the inside. So when you get there, what you have to do is just slide each of the barrel bolts over and it flips down and it sits on the supports. Like I said, this is how we store it. It's like we've got all our blankets, our pillows, the RV ladder, everything is stored there. And I do keep that window shut when I park it. When we park it at the house, I usually leave the windows open for airflow, whatever. But that window I do leave closed. That is only for when the girls are actually up there. And actually, here's a perfect time you can show them the... The hinges they they're basically just was one pack of door hinges that we attached so that is how we do that and like I said we get the two barrel bolts they lock it in place the rest of the bedding like I said we got this filler strip you grab it, you slide down, you have to kind of do a little bit of a tuck thing because of the corners. You put your pillows up, blankets, bam, have a nice day. And as you can see, it's a full size bed. I mean, there's plenty of room here. And as we showed, it's like, I do have a flip down leg which won't flip down because I typically, if we're camping, this would still be outside, but there's a flip down leg, there's a little extra support right here. And I still have plenty of room where my flip up table works. So for me, what I do is this is my head end. I can put my cell phone down here. I got the 110 outlet here. It charges everything very nicely. So hopefully that'll help you, Joe, uh, on what we did. And instantly, uh, it's all half-inch plywood. And unfortunately, it did take two sheets because I believe the bed is 60 inches wide and 58 inches deep. So one sheet of plywood did not work. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is diamond cargo. Uh, like I said, I was on Facebook, I found this forum where they want to, it's all about doing this, cargo trailer to camper bills, and Diamond Cargo keeps coming up. Uh, they are n the most reasonable company as far as trailers go. I'm going to cover why I personally went with Diamond Cargo. I, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Do research see what they say that's what i did but one of the things i really liked about diamond cargo was there's a lot of manufacturers out there i don't know how many there are but what i liked about them is the way our trailer was done everything was squared uh, some of the cargo trailers the sides right here are curved you lose a whole lot of space it makes it very difficult to do a build and maybe Robbie, if you can just Go outside, just kind of show them briefly the trim rail. It actually is a squared trailer. There's a curve to the roof, but for the most part, it's squared. 
it makes it a whole lot easier to do the build. Like I said, there's a little bit of a curve, and you actually can see the curve. Let me get out of your way, Robbie. You can show them the girl's bunk bed, and you can see there is a curve to the roof, but overall, the trailer is more squared. Squared makes it a whole lot easier to try to frame things out, and we'll go into that with Robbie's camper build. Mm. Um, but yeah, they are really good. Um, like I said, I posted it um, on their page. Initially, when I started looking at trailers, I was going to do like a 6x12 trailer in white. I found Diamond Cargo, and we were able to find the 6x14 for the same price, or actually less, than what the 6x12 would have been. So I actually, basically, I got more trailer, and... You got the extra height I, and the color, which is a big one. Yes, I got the extra height and the color. I don't think that was in the comparison, but yes, I, I did that as an option. But just as far as like the stock trailer, you know, yes, we did add the extra six inches of height, the, the extra vents, but just the stock trailer was a better deal with Diamond Cargo. We've had the trailer 10 months now. We towed it all the way back from Georgia. We do had done two camping trips. I've been very pleased. Uh, the wells have been great. Um, axles, lighting, wiring, no issues at all. I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a trailer, Diamond Cargo. And you're not a paid spokesperson. Yes. Oh, and yes. No, I'm not paid. I should get paid from them, but <laughs> no. But they are a good trailer company. We had no issues. Their turnaround time was great. We ordered it. Everything was exactly what I told them. I mean, I sent them schematics of exactly where I wanted the bathroom vent. I wanted the door moved, extra height on the walls. Everything I told them was exactly what I was looking for. So. And this review is just basically coming from a couple of good old boys. And we're just consumers, just like you. So yeah. it's just, there's our experience. Yep, so we were very happy with that. So um, the next thing we had to do was to do the sink drain. Um, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not doing no holding tanks, nothing like that. So one of the issues I had was I went from an inch and a quarter drain or inch and a half drain, which is a typical kitchen drain, to trying to go through a water hose. So what we ended up having to do was we modified the plumbing. And if you're going to do this, what I ended up doing to, because you don't want food particles or whatever going down, I got these screens that will catch anything that is going to go down the drain and we'll show you the outside in a little bit and we're going to be putting a holding tank outside but it's going to have to be portable yes so we got that um the next thing we're going to do is when i go outside i'll show you the drain and i've got some other ideas so we'll go out there show them the drain like I said, we took an inch and a half drain, which is your typical kitchen plumbing. And I basically, it's going to accept the water hose. It comes out right here, goes down, and know. it's going to take a water hose. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is go in back because... I love that you guys love our videos, and we're going to have a little bit of fun this afternoon, because we talked about the batteries. I want to revisit this. Oh, you're not going to. Yeah, you're we're not. Going, yeah, we're going back to the battery thing. We posted a video, I think it was part 11B, the outside part, and I discussed the battery, and me and Robbie, Robbie went, it was very nice. We did not get into it, but venting your batteries. Okay, and yes. <laughs> Hydrogen does rise. Thank you. You're welcome. Hydrogen does rise. So basically behind here underneath my couch is where my battery is. This is the highest point. There's a vent underneath. Hydrogen does rise. That's the Hindenburg thing. And yes, Robbie was very nice. <laughs> I had the right concept. I just said it wrong. But yes, hydrogen rises. So yes, vent your battery box. Like I said, this is my vent. It's going to let the hydrogen gas out. There's air in the bottom, so basically 
air is going to come into bottom. It's going to vent as it needs to. And I told Robbie, he didn't know all my scripting that I was going to do today, but yes. I didn't have a little bit of fun here, but yeah. We had the right theory, we're just on, not on the same. And just and just as proof, we don't we don't edit anything. You, you, can't, you catch it. We screw up. That's just yeah, the way you're going to get it. it. Um, the other thing I want to talk about was sealing and insulation. Do um, you want to go back inside? Yeah, with, it's a little bit windy. Wind. <laughs> All right, so the other thing that they we had comments about or that I saw on uh, Facebook was about um, sealing stuff and insulation. We use three-quarter inch foam insulation. Um, I do not know what the R value is. It's not very high, but it does make a difference. When we bought the trailer, it was just the wood walls and the ceiling was open. We took all the walls off, put three-quarter inch insulation on the walls and on the ceiling, and it made a big difference. Like I said, we're here in South Florida, and it was 95 outside. It was pretty close to 95 inside, so it wasn't a lot, but it does make a difference. So definitely do that. And also, um, another thought, <laughs> when you do order from Diamond Cargo, um, there was a lot of postings about it. They use these weird nails that had like a Phillips head, which you cannot unscrew. If you know you want to do this, like I said, I love Diamond Cargo. I did not know. I've learned the hard way. You can request it with actual self-tapping screws. If you want to be able to take the walls off, request it. It is no extra charge, but you just need to let them know what you want to do. Um, unfortunately, we learned the hard way. Uh, which, but that was on us. It, All we had to do was, was ask. Uh, they did not build the trailer. They did not know what we were going to do with it. Had I told them I wanted to be able to take the walls off, they would have used screws. So it did not work. So anyway, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on some video series of Robbie Robbie's camper build. So. Let's go out there because I said. Uh, well, hey, hang, hang, hang on, hang on. Uh, Entertainment Center. Entertainment Center. Sorry, thank you very much. It was there. I didn't follow my lesson order. Entertainment Center. Thank you. Uh, basically, obviously, you can see we got the Entertainment Center done. Um, what we did was obviously you saw we already had the fireplace. Since the last video, we actually installed. Um, two 6x9 pile blue label speakers are rated for 200 watts. We mounted the pile 200 watt um, CD FM stereo. Uh, I actually modified it so I could get the base box in there. Mounted the TV that I already had in my bedroom. Um, it's a 30 inch flat screen by Curtis. And because I have the shore cable and the TV antenna. I got this from the depot for six bucks. It's either the antenna from the roof or cable. The other thing also I liked that we did was these outlets. I got them on eBay. They're typical 110 outlets, but they also have the USB charging port. So you don't have to bring the whole plug in. All you need is your cable and you can charge your phone, which is why we left this mantle it kind of works cosmetically, but it's also a nice spot. You can set your phone here, whatever. You can run it into the stereo, and that works. So the other thing that we also have is technology, whatever. These are the remote controls that I have for everything. Um, my TV, the fireplace, and the stereo. And I'm not sure which one I like more, the fireplace or the stereo, because they all work. So, and I'm very happy with the whole setup. Um, I'll be honest, I'm more interested in the music factor than the TV factor, but it works. So like I said, we've got the two speakers here, the subwoofer, 
We got the two speakers in the oh, back. You're not being brief again. I try to be as brief as I can. <laughs> anyway, so here is it for part 12, and we're going to come back and do another video, and we're going to start doing a video on Robbie's build. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. God bless. Subscribe, like, and like I said, if you have comments, I'll be more than happy to show you additional footage, more in-depth, and we'll go from there. All right, YouTube, we thank you very much for, for watching. We really love having you guys here. I uh, do apologize that uh, it's a little bit long-winded, but this is kind of the fit and finish, so there's not all these great big things that we can show you. Anyway, God bless you, God bless America, God and bless. take care.